From 1887 until the early 1990s, all of Western science was based on the principle that what happens in one place has absolutely no effect on what happens somewhere else. And now we know that this is absolutely not true. So I'd like to share with you three experiments that are absolutely shaking the foundation of, of Western physics. The first was conducted by uh, uh, a Russian physicist, Vladimir Popinin, uh, in the early 1990s. He came to the United States to, to finish this series of experiments. And what Popinin did was he wanted to investigate the relationship between human DNA and the stuff our world is made out of, little packets of energy that we call photons, little particles of light, if you want to think of them that way. So the experiment consisted of taking a tube, a glass tube, uh, drawing all the air out of this tube, creating what today we call a vacuum, implying that there's nothing left in this tube. However, we know that there's still something left, these, these little particles of light. So Pope then measured the particles to see how they were distributed. Did they fly all over the place inside the tube, or were they all accumulated at the bottom, or what happened with them? And the results of this part of the experiment were not surprising because the, the little particles of light, the photons, were completely random, and this is what they expected. The next part of the experiment is where this gets really, really interesting. Because they placed some human DNA into this tube. And the human DNA, when they remeasured the photons, the human DNA had caused the photons to form an alignment. The DNA was having a direct effect on the stuff our world is made of. Now, this is precisely what ancient spiritual traditions have always said. That something within us has an effect in the world around us. The second experiment is a fascinating experiment. It's a military experiment. And what they did, in essence, was they took some human DNA, uh, some scrapings from the tissue of inside the, uh, the mouth of, of a donor or a volunteer, and they placed this DNA in a device that could measure its effects in one room of a building while the donor that the DNA came from is in another room in the same building. And what they did was they subjected the volunteer to what they called emotional stimulation that would elicit genuine responses of emotion, of joy or sadness or fear or anger or rage in one part of the building. And they were measuring the DNA to see if the DNA would affect to the donor's emotions. Now, why would it? In Western physics today, there's absolutely nothing that suggests that that DNA is still linked to the donor on the one hand. And on the other hand, as they conducted these experiments, what they found was just the opposite. What they found was that when the donor was having his emotional peaks and valleys in one room, the DNA was having its emotional peaks and valleys in another room at exactly the same time. So the third experiment was conducted, again, in the early 1990s by the Institute of Heart and Math. Uh, a pioneering research organization uh, based in uh, Northern California uh, that are exploring uh, the human heart is much more than simply as a pump that moves blood through our bodies. And although the heart, our hearts do do precisely that, it may be the least of what our hearts do. They're, they're discovering that our hearts are the strongest uh, uh, magnetic field uh, in 